what's up everybody welcome to my channel in this video today i will be sharing with you how you can migrate an on-premise sql server database to azure sql server using powershell and sql package but first i'll show you the manual way of doing stuff like connecting to management studio doing the manual export and then importing the same to the azure database now this can be time consuming, especially if you have additional tasks to do when you're importing and exporting database. For example, you may want to drop some tables or some users like your Windows users before you import them to Azure. Then you may need, then you may need to run some additional script just before you do the export and then you import. Now, now if you have to do this manual, like you have to go and export, then you run the script and then you have to do the import and then you have to run back another script to like create the objects that you just dropped from your database this can take up a little bit of time and you want to make your work more efficient and the goal is to make your work a bit more easier so once so once a task becomes repetitive what you want to start doing is automate those tasks to reduce the amount of time you spend on doing those manual stuff so i'll be sharing with you how you can automate the process using SQL package and PowerShell. So without further ado, let's just jump into this video. All right, so the first thing I'll be showing you is how to export and import your database to add your database. Now, traditionally, when you're going from a regular on-premise SQL server to an on-premise SQL server, you'll do a backup and restore, but with from SQL server to a Azure SQL Server database, then you have to do an export of the application data tier that will create a backpack file and then you import that backpack file on the Azure database. So I'm already connected to my two databases. This is my Azure SQL Server and this is my local SQL Server, which is my laptop, which will be representing a server within your organization. So the first thing we need to do here is select the database that we want to export. So I'm going to be using this RDS test here, select task, and then select export data to your application. Select next. Specify the location where you want to save your backup. Well, not backup, your export. And then specify your file name. So I'm going to say RDS as your so you don't have to specify the extension because here it is already saying it will be saving as a backpack file. So click save, next, finish. This takes a longer time than the other step that I'll be showing you. And they, bear in mind, this is a very small database. No data is in it really, just an empty table. And this took about a minute or more. So close that. So the next step, we're going to be importing this backpack file to our Azure SQL server. So let's refresh our databases just to confirm that we don't have any database on the server. Now let's go to the Azure portal and then refresh and validate the same. So we have no databases currently on the Azure instance. Right click on databases, select import data to your application select next and then we're going to be browsing for our file on the backup location now i'll be selecting the backpack file open next and finish guys bear in mind that the time to export and import a database will be dependent on the size of the database so the, long, the larger the database the longer the process will take but using the sql package and PowerShell which I'll be showing you after but using SQL package and PowerShell that I'll be showing you will like cut your time significantly. This took roughly about four minutes to import pretty much an empty database from my on-prem to Azure. Now before I jump into the other step I want to show you something real quick. So as you can see RDS Azure was and I have one sample table here. Let's go over to our Azure portal and refresh. I know of one database being reflected. Now let's jump back to our SQL server. Now let's say we didn't want a sample table in our database 
each time we're going to be exporting a data tier and then importing ba the backpack file to Azure. Now you see that an additional step will come into play. Now each time you want to do an export, you would have to drop the table and then once the import is complete, then you'd have to recreate back that table in your test environment. This is just an example I'm giving you. It could be it could be logons, it could be assemblies that are not supported in Azure database and you have to drop them each and every time you are going to be exporting the database to create the backpack file and then you'll have to recreate them. So, so that will definitely take up some more time and additional step. Now let's go over to PowerShell that will make the process really simple and faster. So this is my PowerShell script. I believe in the script or a link to the script in the description below depending on the time when you are watching this video because I'll be posting it as a blog as well. Now these variables are pretty much self-explanatory. This is my source SQL Server information and this is my Azure database information. Now this here, the SQL package location is a program that you can install on your SQL Server and it will be installed in this location, this directory that says 150 depending on the version which you are running. So the SQL package utility is the program that we'll be using to export and import the databases which, which is way faster than using Management Studio. Now this is my extension which is going to be a backpack file and this I'm just setting up the file name for the exported database. So this is the directory that it will be in. This is the database name along with the date appended to it. Now this is my connection information. The reason why I have this is because I'll be connecting to database, dropping a table, then once the export is completed, then I'll be recreating that table. So if I wasn't doing that step, I would need to connect to my database in this manner. Now this is just a if block to test if I was successfully connected to my database. Now this is the PowerShell command that will allow me to execute a script which is on my server. Now here you can see I'm specifying the full path where the script is located, specifying my source server name and my database. Now this is the command that will be used to export the database. Now as you can see I'm going to the package location, I'm executing the SQL package, the action type is export and these are acronyms I'll leave a link to the, to the full documentation in the description below. You can find them on the on the Microsoft website. So TF is the short name for target file, right? SSN is a short for source server name. And SDN, as you can see, is the database name. And SU is source user. And SP is source password. Now, once I export the database, then I want to recreate back my table in the original database. So this is exactly what the command is doing. So here, I have a create table script and then I close the connection to that database. Now, once that is successfully done, then I move on to the import, which is similar to the export commands. And then you have the catch block here, just to write any error that has occurred. Now, we're going to be executing the script and then see how long it takes to export and import the database to our Azure instance. So I previously omitted my password, so I'm just gonna have to put the correct thing. Now let's re-execute the script now that I've provided my passwords. Now let's see how long it will take. So the time is now 4.55. Remember guys, you can output this information that is being printed on the screen to a log file. So in the event that you had to run this process in the night because we have a large database, then you'll have the log files to review if everything went through successfully. The time is now 4.58, so that's way quicker than when we use Management Studio to export and import. And remember, there are two additional steps to drop the table and then 
recreate the table back in the local database now if we go to our azure database which was recently imported then we should not be seeing that table in the database so let's refresh and this is the database that was imported now let's expand tables no tables but if we check the rds test then we should be seeing the table here so that's how you can use PowerShell and SQL package to automate your work.